Hi guys, my name's Seb Tudor, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain, and welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about the next point along the spectrum of a person that we've been talking about now for quite some time. And um, this one is the asshole. Fairly, fairly self-explanatory, but let's get into it. Ultimately, this individual tends to be someone who has either always been this way to one degree or another, or has come from the, the more nice guy end of the spectrum, emulating behaviors from the bad boy or, or from from other sources around that that's this side of the spectrum and uh, as a result they have taken the wrong interpretation of this for example they may have taken the the kind of self-focused and uh, kind of confident cocky um, behaviors from the bad boy and misinterpreted them in to turn it into self-centered kind of attitudes to the point of nar narcissism Ugh. narcissism at some points, um, and instead of it being um, kind of fun-loving with an open agenda, it'll be more, much more reckless and irresponsible uh, to the point of being kind of inc completely inconsiderate and abusive, uh, thin-skinned even, and, and dishonest around what they're doing. Um, and so the bit, one of the big factors that, that highlights an asshole more so than any of the others is that they always blame others to the point of directly contradicting themselves you know they will be dishonest in the way that they will and irresponsible in the way that they describe themselves and talk themselves up however then when someone will question them on it the more thin-skinned and abusive side of them will come out blaming those people or blaming other sources even though they've just been talking about how amazing that they are because they've done all of these things for themselves when they're questioned on it, if it's especially if it's something that, that fractures their lie, they will become far more negative and abusive and blaming in a directly contradictory way just to make themselves, um, just to try and protect themselves and try and stop their little um, facade from breaking down around them. Now, I, at one point, when I was in school, I went from being kind of a nice to kind of frozen guy I discovered that I had confidence and that my brain was actually a, an asset and that I wasn't as unattractive as I thought I was and or that I had been told I was and um, as a result after that I deliberately isolated myself because I felt that my friends were new to me because as I've said before you know you get stuck into social roles to a degree when you're interacting with friends on a regular basis you know you fit into your place and so you know it was hard for me to go from school where I was always one of the people who would sit back and be quite quiet and listen to the others um, around me more so than purely contributing all the time um, and I, I went from that where I was much more shy and reserved to um, a place where then you know I was moving into management as work and stuff like that and so I needed to be much more confident much more assertive much more direct um, but I got to a point where in that gap between those two places where I was having to be responsibility having having to be responsibility having to be responsible and having to be direct and authoritative um, in kind of my work life which became a very much large part of my life um, and being the shy, kind of quiet, um, kind of uh, hit, kind of uh, the, the recessive kid, the one that was just kind of hiding in his own flesh, um, to one degree or another, and um, you know, in that gap between, it was very much a case of there's the, there's my ideal place for confidence and what I want and the relationships I want to have and the things that I want to do I had already undershot it I was already nervous and quiet and all of the what if bricks that I was building my walls out of and every so often there'd be that little thing that came into my head and went well she's with him and I really like her but what has he got that I don't you know and that would still occasionally jump into my head there uh, And th but the thing is then I overshot it. I overshot it massively and I got into this space. I became reckless and irresponsible. I wasn't so much on the dishonest side, but I I did take a lot more of the whole um, 
uh, the more inconsiderate side. You know, I would look at look at the people around me, and I would see how I could leverage that more for me, so that I could get what I wanted instead of um, anything else. I don't think I ever really touched in on the the abusive and thin skinned kind of dishonest side of things, but I was very much more kind of like how can I step on others to get what I want? And the thing is, I had that experience before I actually hit management. And that was why I think when I got to management, I was able to continually pay attention and be considerate and be aware of my, my team and the people around me so that I could get them to work without really just stepping on them. Um, because I realized that I, by that point that just purely being inconsiderate just caused so many problems as I ran forward with it you know things became dull honestly when I was able to leverage everything in my favor um, but again I didn't stretch into the the real heights of being the abusive reckless and kind of um, self-contradictory uh, individual that, that this kind of stands out as but the one thing I will say is whilst this isn't a good thing to be you know, it's obviously negative. It's obviously self-harming as much as it is, you know, impacting on the people around you and isolating. There's nothing wrong with undershooting and overshooting because it gives you a better understanding of where that point in the middle is that you want to be at. Yeah, that's some of the, you know, tr life is trial and error. Life is mistakes. You just need to make sure that you're learning from them as you make them. Yeah, so it's like, I undershot horribly when I was a kid. I overshot horribly as I came into being an adult. I narrowed in on that as I grew into my 20s, you know, um, or out of my late teens into my 20s. And as a result, it's allowed me now to settle much more in that more like self-focused, confident, ideal space in the middle there without being... Um, like painfully negative to people on either end and so you know obviously you want to try and keep a good you know good tabs on yourself to know where you're going and I wish I had had this kind of uh, like the spectrum tool that I'm I'm talking through and have been talking through recently I wish I'd had this kind of thing back then simply because it would have let me monitor more of where I was and where I felt I was and how I could kind of nudge myself back to where I needed to be there would have been a greater understanding of these things, you know. And I can only think that, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to go over this with you guys, especially in regards to relationships, is that you see so many men being pushed, uh, in particular men, being pushed to either end of the spectrum because there is so much pressure on them still to um, initiate uh, interactions with women, to... Um, provide for relationships and to do all of that kind of thing um, and yet as a result because of that pressure you know what happens when you put something heavy on the middle of a I don't know a block of jelly yeah it pushes everything out so that it can go down yeah so the more pressure you put on it the more people you push to the extremes and this stands to reason for a lot of things but here you know in directly in interpersonal relationships especially intimate relationships it causes so many more problems with that pressure being there you know and the thing is though if the person if the per, if that point in the middle is able to withstand that pressure then they can deal with anything so and everyone has the capacity to be that point in the middle that can withstand that pressure just take some time take some experimentation take some working out but obviously being here as part of making being an asshole in this sense as part of making a mistake that as, as part of a learning experience as part of doing something outside of what you would normally do to um, kind of experience it and know what you can do and can't do or what you're happy with doing and not happy with doing great that's a learning experience choosing that this is the way that you want to be only detrimental to you and the people around you but anyway there are there's no shortage of assholes in the world i mean the the description that i gave could basically be uh be given to any or a huge number of politicians in the western world at the moment you know reckless irresponsible 
uh, inconsiderate, thin-skinned, dishonest, self-centered to the point of narcissism, and always blaming others, even if it directly contra contradicts themselves. That sounds very much like the, uh, uh, well, let's just say an awful lot of, of politicians that have recently either come into power or recently been in the spotlight. And so there's obviously no shortage of these people, unfortunately. However, there are ways to deal with them, which usually comes down to just removing them from your life to one degree or another. But also what it comes down to is if you are one of these people in this place, you don't want to be here long term. Yeah. Look at the the number of issues, troubles, the the um, the negatives attached to the people that sit here for their entire lives. Yeah. It doesn't help you along your way to any kind of, of close interaction with other people, considering I've been, this is a tool mostly that I put across for people uh, trying to monitor themselves for kind of self improvement with dating kind of in mind. But just in general, it doesn't help you. But anyway, that's my, uh, my my thoughts on this as well as the the rundown of it so what do you guys think please let me know you know how have you interacted with people like this um have you ever found yourself in this place and then realized that actually maybe you know you sh this is something that could maybe be tinkered with and readdressed you know maybe you're not in the best of places you know i would like to think i'm i in fact i'm almost positive i know full well that i'm not the only person who hit a place like this and then slowly dialed it back and worked towards a better place. Um, in which case, how did you do that? I've told you what happened with me. You know, I, I took, uh, things got boring, things got dull and I started taking a good look at myself and actually working my way back. How did you guys do it? Again, anything that you say down in the comments below allows me to see what you guys are interested in, might give me some ideas for more videos and things like that, but also it lets you guys see the experiences of other people around you so that you can learn. And so that it might just give you some more to think about on top of what I've already said in this video. You know, everything's a learning experience, everything that you guys say or or, or do in the comments will potentially allow a, a learning experience for someone else on the possible other side of the planet. But Otherwise, if you found this at all thought-provoking or liked what I was saying or just found it interesting in some way, then please drop me a like and otherwise please subscribe for more and I will see you guys in the next video tomorrow. Take care.